Hi everybody, it's 314 React here. Today we're going to be looking at getting reshade ray tracing on Unreal Tournament 99. Now the first thing you want to do is grab the Unreal DirectX 11 renderer. This isn't necessary specifically for reshade, but it just gets the overall engine up to date and adds a lot of cool effects. There's a link to this in the description, which has all the instructions on how to install. I've also put in the description links to my previous videos on the DirectX 11 renderer. You also want to grab the high resolution Unreal skins, which will update all the skins for Unreal and Unreal Tournament. So you have high res weapons and enemies, all the good stuff like that. And you also want to grab the Unreal HD textures. Again, link in the description and the link has instructions on how to install all this. This will update all the textures in the game, get everything up to date, get DirectX 11. And on top of that, you want to grab Unreal Tournament version 469A. Again, link in the description and some previous videos linked down there as well. This should get your Unreal Tournament installation up to date and should allow you to run all this stuff smoothly and make the game look and run as best as possible. Once you have all that, you wanna to go to reshade.me, click download, download the latest version, which as of the 31st of October 2020 is version 482, you wanna download that. And then again, you wanna to go to the link in the description where there's a guide on how to get the ray tracing shader made by Marty McFly, otherwise known as Pascal. In this link, there's details on how ray tracing in the shader works, as well as installation guides. You need to sign up to Mike McFly's Patreon, which will allow you to go onto their Discord server. And then within that, you'll be able to download the very latest RTGI file. Once you've got all that, you want to go to wherever Unreal Tournament is installed. In my case, it's under Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Unreal Tournament. And then you want to go into the System folder. Then you want to grab the latest setup for Reshade, open that up, click Run, click here to select a game, click Browse. And then you want to copy that path to System in there. It's already in there for me, but I'll repaste it in. And then scroll down to UnrealTournament.exe, select Direct 3D 10, 11, 12. In my case, I've already got it installed, so I'm going to click Update. Check all of the first page of shaders, hit OK, and then just sit back and let the rest work. It'll take a little while to download and install, and then once it's installed, see Reshade Setup was successful. And there should be a new folder called Reshade-Shaders going there. And then you want to grab the latest Reshade GI beta from the Discord, which is 1702. Grab those two folders, just drag and drop them over, overwrite anything in there. Now get that up to date then you want to go into the shaders folder itself QUINT folder and there's an additional QUINT ditherfx file which you can grab off of the discord as well uh, someone in there should be able to give that to you or if you scroll far enough up in the beta channel you should be able to find this file i don't think it's necessary for ray tracing but i like to install it in for completion so just drag and drop that over and done so now all of that is installed another bit of configuration once you've got a reshade.ini file i think you need to boot the game up you can either edit the default one or you can boot the game up and make another one by copying the default so here I've got ut99.reshaded.ini copied from the default settings.ini and under preprocessor definitions I've enabled material underscore type 1 and infinite underscore bounces 1. This will allow uh, two extra options for setting the material type globally so you can adjust reflectivity and specular as well as infinite bounces where you can adjust how the light bounces around. The person that told me about this was someone called CJDK who uh, evidently works on reshade. I didn't realize this at the time but now I do so thanks to them. With this enabled you can then save that and then and we can boot up the game. So here we are in game at the main menu. And as you can see in the corner, we've got version 469 patch. If you go to the options, you go to preferences. You can change to DirectX 11. Just make sure that's set up there. The new 469 patch adds a whole bunch of extra cool stuff. Again, which you can find in the links in the description, which lead to my previous YouTube videos on the 469 patch. So with all that installed and ready to go, there's some other settings you may want to adjust while here. So if you go to tools and system console, type in preferences and with advanced advanced options open you can then go to rendering direct 3d 11 and you want to make sure that for reshade you need to have anti-aliasing off otherwise reshade won't work properly here you can also turn off the directx 11 renderer's own ambient occlusion so it doesn't conflict with reshade zone ambient occlusion when you're using the rtgi shader here you can also turn on pre cache which i think helps out with slight frame drops at the start of a level because the amount of textures and stuff that i've got loaded up sometimes it seems to lag a bit for me and i think other people i think setting pre cache here to true helps with that. Uh, you can also adjust HDR, detail textures, bump mapping, shiny surfaces, parallax occlusion. You can pretty much adjust everything you want here within the DirectX 11 renderer. So as you can see, I've got the SSR intensity at five, model intensity at five, but you can adjust that as much as you want. You can make it more shiny, less shiny. But the most important thing to note here is that anti-aliasing is set to zero and the pre-cache is on. So with all that done, we can now move on to opening up Reshade. You can hit home 
and that will bring up the reshade menu. And then you just want to go to search, type in RTGI, and that will bring up the RT Global Illumination FX file, which you can then tick and enable. And then you want to go down here. You can see where everything can be adjusted. There's one other thing that needs to be set. You need to go to edit global preprocessor definitions, and you need to make sure that reshade depth input is reversed, is set to one. And I've also got copy depth buffer before clear operations selected. This should allow reshade to read the depth buffer and run its effects correctly. So with all that, we can jump into a game and we can start adjusting the ray tracing settings. Alrighty, so let's take a look at some Phobos. The other thing you need to do is that the Unreal HD skins are run by Mutator. Again, there's a link in the description to another video going over all this. So you enable the Mutator HD skins full. If you want, you can enable random HD armors, which basically makes the armor pickups random colors. So instead of just being green armor pickups, they can be red, blue, gold, or green. Alright, so let's jump right in. So here we are in game. You can also see there's DirectX 11 doing a lot of stuff here. So you've got screen space reflections and ambient occlusion, parallax occlusion mapping, bump mapping, a bunch of really cool effects that have also been added in as well as tessellation. So what we're gonna do is gonna bring up the menu. I've got a pre-configured file. I'm just gonna enable it. And you can see already there's been some lighting added. So what I've done here is I've gone down into the material settings, which is enabled from that setting that we enabled in the pre-processor definitions in the INI file. I've turned the specular down to 70 and roughness down to 15. We'll go over those in a bit more detail later. I've got ray length up at max, amount of rays at three, amount of steps per ray at max, Z thickness is at 20. The amount of rays you can turn higher, but it really hits the frame rate. And the frame rate now is 51 frames and before it's like 98 frames. So at the moment it's cutting off a good 40 frames. So you want to keep the amount of rays at three. Uh, the Z thickness just prevents the gun making a shadow on the floor, which looks really horrible. So if we turn that up, you kind of see the guns making a shadow there. So 20 seems to be the sweet spot for that. Uh, you want to enable precise light spreading, simulation of back face lighting and alternate intersection tests. So if you go to the lighting channel, you can turn these off and you can see how having these on really enhances the look. It has less of an effect in Unreal Tournament because the geometry is a lot more simple, but it's still worth having them on as they have basically no FPS impact. And again, we come down to the material. So we've got specular and roughness. So if we turn these up to their defaults of one, you'll see everything has a much more diffuse effect with the lighting. So if we turn the roughness down, you'll see everything becomes a lot more mirror-like. Now, because we already have DirectX 11 doing the screen base reflections, there's not much need to crank this up to the max. Otherwise, it may conflict a little bit. So if we go back to the regular channel, you can see how it kind of accentuates the screen space reflections, but you can pretty much get a similar effect just by turning up the screen space reflections. Because I have that adjusted at the moment where the screen space reflections aren't so shiny. The only thing I have noticed is that the screen space reflections are a lot more sharp and crisp, whereas the RTGI ones add a little bit of blur to it, a little bit of bloom to it. So at the moment that's a bit too high. So you go there and I think it's good to crank the roughness up a bit. It's probably around 40 specular. Again, go to the lighting channel, just turn that down a little bit. So it's not too shiny. We've also got next bounce weight, which seems to just increase the bounces of the ray tracing, which seems to make everything brighter, but it also does increase the definition of the reflections, I think from what I've seen. So if we can turn down the ambient occlusion intensity down a little bit to 285 and then turn the next bounce weight up a little bit. You can actually get a bit more definition in those reflections on the ground. The only trouble is if you turn it up too high, it does have a kind of blur effect. Let's go to the lighting channel again. So you can see the floors have kind of a mirror effect in the lighting channel, but you can really turn it down to make it like super mirror. Uh, get that specular still, still leave that 25, go to the regular channel. I think it works really well for uh, these sort of environments where it's metallic floors and you're just adding in that extra lighting. There you can see a bit more of the blur coming from that extra bounce weight. I think for more organic floors, it's not going to look so good and the shader can't tell the difference between types of uh, material on the floor. The DirectX 11 renderer can, so grass doesn't actually reflect that much, which is really, really good. But this will reflect everywhere, so you want to be careful with how it's set. So it's probably best to crank that roughness up a bit. Keep that specular relatively low. Keep that next bounce weight at about 40. So you can see everything that's going on here. You can see the real-time shadowing and shading, especially from those weapons there, the lighting, the reflections in the ground. Not too excessive, but also kind of a nice reflective effect. 
Now we go back to the regular channel and let's just keep ambient occlusion intensity at four, bounce lighting intensity at three, and the fade out start end maxed out so that the effect goes as far as possible. And we've got a pretty decent looking effect here. So of course this is all subjective. You can adjust this as much as you want, as well as adjusting the uh, AO built into the DirectX 11 renderer and adjusting the screen space reflections built into the DirectX 11 renderer. And you can either just not use reshade or combine them in various different ways. I would like to have a mix of both. At the moment, I don't really use reshade too much only because of the frame rate. Once I've got powerful enough hardware to get over the frame rate issues, then I'll probably have this on all the time. And I'll try and find more of a balance between the uh, DirectX 11 SSR and the ray tracing. But at the moment, these settings seem to be a fairly good balance. They give some extra shadowing and shading, some reflections in the ground, and they generally just help the lighting out quite a bit and make it a lot less flat, which is really, really nice. There's also another thing I like to enable, which is DELC sharpening. So if you just type in DELC, just tick that on and probably need to be running this video in 4K on quite a decent screen to really see it. But once you've got that enabled, you can adjust the sharpen strength. Let's adjust it to 0.8 and it basically just sharpens up all the textures, makes everything look a lot nicer, especially the high res textures. Just add some real definition to those. And again, that's all adjustable. So you can see around here, these tiny little bits, you can see that they look a bit blurry, but then you enable the DALC and it just sharpens them up, gives them a lot of definition down there. And of course, this is all adjustable, so you don't have to have it up at max, but that's just a nice little one I like to have on there as well. Doesn't seem to impact the frame rate that much and affects everything on screen. Maybe I'll turn it down a little bit because Mars looks a bit sharp there. Maybe down to 75%. There we go. So DirectX 11 in combination with the high res textures, skins and tessellated models, all the enhancements from DirectX 11 on top of having reshade ray tracing really brings Unreal Tournament to life. It's so beautiful, especially for such an old game. If you go into the lighting channel, you can see the shadowing here. There's a shadow down there just below this little area here, which isn't there in the normal game. Shadows and reflections, lighting reflections from these holes here and obviously extra shading on the weapon. So if we look in the regular channel, turn the effect off and then back on. You can see the way it blends that light, the way it's bouncing the light around, just gives it a lot more depth. And also you'll notice that uh, the weapons here have all been updated as well. That's because the new version three of the Unreal HD skins has updated all of the weapon models and their textures. Whoops. A lot of the weapon positions have changed, so the weapons are smaller now on screen. Now, if you're running the newer weapon models and you also run widescreen, you may notice there's some issues with them. There's a fix for that in the 3.1 patch of the HD skins. All you need to do is hit escape, go to the mod menu, go down to Unreal HD configuration and check the box widescreen weapon fix. So now we've gone over the setup and some configuration. Let's jump into a more natural level. One of my old favorites, Arcane Temple. So as you can see, the rocky sort of uh, areas here, the stone sort of areas here, have a little bit of reflection in them from the SSR and DirectX 11, but not too much. So it's not too bad. And you'd expect uh, stone to be reflective anyway. So that looks fine. But as you can see, the grass doesn't have any reflection in it at all because the DirectX 11 renderer can tell the difference between grass and stone. You've also got some really beautiful normal mapping and reflections in the water here, which just looks absolutely gorgeous. And that's from the DirectX 11 renderer. As I said, Reshade itself can't tell the difference between these materials. So if you go to the lighting channel, you can see there is a certain mirror-like effect on the grass when the roughness is turned down. So we turn the roughness all the way down. The grass becomes truly like a mirror. And when we go back to the regular channel, you can see it's super glassy grass, which isn't great. Again, this would look really good on metallic floors. Maybe even the stone floors within the temple. But outside, yeah. So this way you need to find the balance and get that roughness up to like 40, 45. Just to prevent it from doing that. Or you can turn the roughness all the way up to 1 as it is normally, and just get the pure sort of ambient lighting coming off of it. But because I like to complement the SSR that's already in place, I think it's a good trade-off to just have a little bit of reflectivity on the grass that's not too noticeable in the regular channel just so we can get that extra lighting reflectivity on the actual shiny surfaces and have it really combine with the SSR in a really nice way. Because you can see there, you've got this green bit here, that kind of emerald color. You can see it reflected in the SSR there. But when we turn on the ray tracing, there's a little bit of extra light just being bounced off of it there. And it just really works nicely with that SSR. And just these textures as well from Unreal HD, just absolutely gorgeous stuff. And a lot of these textures have got parallax occlusion mapping on them. 
I'll show off a bit more of that later. The new random color armors are awesome. So let's go to another level and check out some more of the textures and some of the parallax occlusion mapping alongside the reshade ray tracing. All right, so good map for checking out the parallax occlusion maps is DMP. And we have a look at the ground here. You can see ultra bumpy ground thanks to the parallax occlusion mapping which looks absolutely beautiful. Look at that. So good as you go around it. So this has all been enabled with the DirectX 11 renderer and the dev of the DirectX 11 renderer has also added in the normal maps that the parallax occlusion mapping runs off of to give it that bumpy effect. So let's switch over again to the lighting channel in Reshade. You can see all the extra ambient occlusion here along the floors, along the walls, the lights coming from those torches. There's a bit of the HUD reflecting there in the bottom right corner and bottom left hand corners. I've not found a way around that yet. Hopefully I can in future, but that's just the way it works at the moment because it's all run off of screen space. Given how nice it looks and how you don't really notice that in gameplay, that's a, not too much of a bad trade-off. If you go in this little area here, you can see the screen space reflections. And because the screen space reflections also have the normal mapping applied, the reflections go around the bumps nice and naturally. If we turn off the reshade, you can see, still see there's the screen space reflections there. They're very subtle. But when you turn the ray tracing on, it gives just that extra bit of light bouncing. You can see as it's glowing there as well. Complements the screen space reflections very, very nicely. There's even a bit of a blue glow there from the side. And overall, this little area of the castle is more realistically lit because it's undercover here. And you can also see the gun there looks awesome with the extra ambient occlusion and the DELC sharpening on it. Even the hand holding the gun looks better because you've got extra shading there in between the uh, bits of the gun that don't have any shading normally and you've got extra shading in the hand there the only thing you can see is a little bit of reflectivity there you can just see as it sort of clips the edge of the polygons there and that sort of shows it off a bit more and makes it look even more polygonal but again it's not too noticeable it's not too bad and the extra reflectivity combined with the screen space reflections just makes it look even better again you're seeing some frame dips there for this area here this is with the rt on Turn the RT off. And then back on. So you can really see that extra lighting from those torches there. And it looks amazing. Really makes it feel so much more warmer. More natural lighting gives it a lot more depth. And the DLC sharpening is really, really, maybe adding a bit too much sharpening to those uh, bricks on the floor and those stones on the floor. But I don't think that's too bad. And it just looks rather flat without it. The only issue, as I say, with the frame dips is with it on, you've got 39 frames a second. And with it off, we shoot all the way up to 88 frames a second. So this is quite a heavy area anyway. Usually it's running at 98 frames a second. This is probably a good area to play around with the precise light spreading and these other cool settings. So if you have a look here, you've got all three of those turned off. So no precise light spreading, no simulation of back face lighting, and no alternate intersection test. So if we turn on precise light spreading, you can already see just makes things a little bit tidier. Simulation of back face lighting. So because the shader can't use lighting from sources that aren't on screen, this is a simulation of that by using front side color from visible objects and applying it to the back. So it kind of gives the impression there's light coming from behind these objects here and also adding a bit of extra lighting combined with the precise light spreading enabled earlier. You get that kind of extra blend of ambient occlusion and lighting there, especially in that little window and down here. And then alternate intersection test really as a lot on top of that. So it can be quite sharp without that enabled. You got the sharp sort of ambient occlusion and it's all a bit kind of unnatural. In alternate intersection test enable and it smooths it all out. Make, it seems to make the light blend a lot better. You also get a lot more happening as well as you can see there. So you're seeing the light from here bounce all the way to there, up here, down there, a lot better. Also hitting the gun as well. If you turn specular up, it's way too much. If you go to the regular channel, Super bright. Again, kind of looks cool, but probably a bit excessive. Let's keep that specular down. Roughness all the way up and all the way down. Now that looks kind of awesome. But it does make everything look a bit like a hall of mirrors, which is probably a bit excessive. So overall, that is how to get reshade ray tracing on Unreal Tournament 99. I think it looks really awesome. I really love how configurable everything is with Unreal Tournament within the game and outside of the game with Reshade. Of course, Reshade Ray Tracing isn't hardware accelerated, so it would be really good if NVIDIA could work with the people at old Unreal and get a new patch out to get RTX built into the game so we can actually have hardware accelerated Ray Tracing within Unreal Tournament. So 
If anyone from NVIDIA watches this, please do take that on board. Anyone not from NVIDIA, just share the video and tag NVIDIA and Epic in it because that would be so cool. Because Quake 2 has had a RTX re-release and that looks incredible. If you like the video, please do like, subscribe, hit the little bell, really helps the channel. Do leave a comment to let me know what you think. Hope everyone's staying safe and I will see you in the next video.